Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the Valvatron HQ in Huddersfield. Today I'm going to tell you about the Valvatron Maxxis WT2. It's not actually a valve unit, uh, that's a very expensive product to make, maybe make later down the line. It's a simple solid state but it's built with a lot of quality. Um, it's a two-way preamp which basically means, if you want to come in closer, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, it's it's two-way, so you've got your um, your base here and your bidden tops here. And I'm going to start off by just playing a bit of music and doing a few demos. So what I've got set up here is a, a record deck, which is going to one of my phono stages uh, but you don't need to use one of these phono stages. You can put the deck straight into the preamp if you want. There's a separate input for that and uh, all the compensation for it. So, But I tend to use it with the deck, the Valvatron phono stage, which is valve, which gives it a nice valvic sound. Uh, then we've got the preamp itself, and this is just an echo unit, which I'm going to show you the echo loop on it. So first of all, I'm just going to take those down. So that's the base and then that's the middle the top. I'm going to put the record on. This actually is uh, a record recorded in analogue just a few years ago on Tascam. I think it was an A38, Al Breadwinner out of Manchester. And this is a Milton Henry song called Gold Digger, in case you like the tune. Uh, so I'll show you what these do. This is going to bring in the middle and top. And this is the bre the bass. Now there's a bit of rattle, but that's the stuff in the workshop rattling about on the shelves. Uh, I promise you, uh, it's all pretty clean. So. You've got again control for the bass and again control, again control for the mid and tops. So that makes it a two way unit. On the top row here, we've got a full um, 12 band graphic equalizer. Now design the, the bands so they're not just the normal bands. The, these are bands which I particularly feel are conducive to shaping reggae music so the bass has got uh, an expanded uh it's got 30 hertz 40 hertz 60 hertz where often you would just have 30 50 there's one in the between for shaping it that little bit better then you've got your regular mid-range voice instrumentation and then you've got your last four or more or less the tops uh, it goes up to 15k uh it actually goes a little bit higher than that by the nature of the graphic equaliser, but there's not many people can really listen to uh, high frequency more than that. So that's the full graphic equaliser, which most people will uh, know how to use. It's all rotary. It's cut and boost. So it's when it's in the middle, it's flat. So you boost it or you cut it. It's up to you. Uh, I'm trying to make this video for beginners and also people who may be a bit a little bit advanced so don't take a f offense if i'm going over really simple stuff with you it, it, it's trying to make one video for everybody so it's a full graphic equalizer for shaping your sound uh, now this is all set flat to to demonstrate it everything's on half uh, so you can cut or boost so if you want more tops you can have more tops if you want more bass you can have more bass or less so this is all set flat, as natural as it can be. This is channel one auxiliary. This is channel two auxiliary. This is channel three auxiliary. Uh, the, all three channels are the same, but they work separately. Uh, so if you want to put a deck in here, this is the volume for your deck here. And you would switch it to deck. That would be the deck straight into the preamp. At the moment, I've got it coming in at line level from the phono stage. So I'm switching it to line level. And don't use that one. I use this one. That's halfway. 
at the moment. That's the line input from your auxiliary. It could be a CD, laptop, mobile phone, whatever you want to put in at line level there. Uh, so the full graphic uh, is well, when you come in on the, your music source, be it a CD or a laptop or, or a record deck or line level, whatever, the full graphic is operative on that. And this is the music channel. Basically, we call it the music channel. So that controls your gain for the, for the deck, the, the line input. And this is the amount of echo on that channel, which I call the music channel. This switch sends uh, the signal into the echo loop, which I'll de demonstrate that in a minute. And that, that is a general kill switch for killing or muting the whole sound. I don't have kill switches on here. Uh, a lot of people said, oh, well, you got kill switches. Well, basically, this is harking back to the original days of preamp, a two-way preamp, one of the first ones. Uh, where i mean if you want to kill you can you can always switch it down you know it's it's no big deal uh but we're just trying to keep this one basic affordable and for also for people who are not massively advanced in the knowledge on electronics and audio stuff so anyway we'll go back to here what we've got in here is your gain input now you can put a microphone i'll show you the back later on you put a microphone in any of these channels or a line level, you still use the same gain because it's it's got sensitivity is balanced on it. So you can use a mic in there or a line level in there. Then you've got a three way equalization, bass, middle and tops uh, on each of these th three auxiliary channels and the amount of echo you want sent into the loop and the echo send again. Now. You could also put a sound effects in this loop uh, on this channel or a CD player on this channel. Uh, any, you could put anything on this channel, but it doesn't have a phono stage for an extra deck. That is something you'd have to sort out. Like I say, this is a simple preamp. The three, four and five way one will be more comprehensive when that's ready. Uh, so those three channels are actually the same and they all mix into the master. So we've covered the graphic equalizer, auxiliary channel one, two, and three. Uh, the music control uh, section here. Now here we have the master echo loop controls. So this is the amount of signal being sent to the echo unit. This is your echo unit. And this is the amount of signal returning from the echo unit. So you've got send and return like a, a studio or mixing desk. You've also got bass and treble, which activates on the echo loop. So if you're getting a bit of problems or you, with, with hum or feedback on the echo loop, or, or you just want to take out the bass because it's probably not necessary, you take down the bass on that. But there's quite a, a basic EQ for the echo. So that's send and return and a bit of an equalization for it. Quite simple. Uh, it's all activated by the send one uh, switches where wherever you want them so that's the master echo uh, controls this fr is full range that will give you a full range output so you've got bass mid and tops in there that's for recording or something like that uh, or, or, or whatever you want to do with it but if you're playing it in your home and you just have a mono system one amp one speaker you could play the whole thing on full range but it's mostly for recording purposes uh, and that has a separate output on the back which i'll show you in a minute this is the parametric equalizer for the bass alone now i'll try and demonstrate that i'll just take that record a little bit back a bit there um so basically we've got um a frequency select on the parametric and a boost so the best way to demonstrate this i reckon is well i don't know if you can hear it on this phone but we'll have a listen anyway okay so 
this kind of finds the frequency that you want to boost this one it's more boxy around there more full range bass around there around here it's softer and lower and deeper so you've got a different kind of bass which you, you would you would probably turn this I'm gonna turn that down turn that up a bit there's a lot of gain in the last part of this shaper in case you need it now that's really going very subby so I'll try and demonstrate here so that's really low really subby with a boost right up as I turn it round It's more of a full range bass. Or, or you could just have it natural, just turned off. There's still bass there, it's just natural. So the record's just in between bass bits at the moment. There we are again. So the best way to demonstrate this is to swing this right round, which won't affect that. And then you find your ideal spot, like there, nice. So that's the base parametric base shape as it's called on here. You've got a VU meter for each uh, as you can see. If you want more level then you can take it up here or you can take it up at the phono stage. So it's adaptable for whatever cartridge you have or whatever signals going into the machine. And that's just a power on and off switch. Uh, so that's basically the front end sorted. So what I want to do is um, take you over here to show you on a, on a different one. But it's the same. Uh, if you can come in closer, uh, then people can read what's on here. So we'll go through the things. If you're just using the deck without the phono stage preamp, you just put your deck in there, stereo left and right. It's blended inside the preamp and uh, turned to mono because everything's mono on, on this uh, system. So you, you will put your deck in there and you put the switch on the front of the preamp to deck position and then you've got a gain for the deck. Alternatively, you can put in a mono line in, which is from the uh, Valvatron phono stage, which converts stereo to mono and comes in on a line in here, mono. Or any other line level input, you could put a CD in there, or your phone, your laptop, like I say, and you've got the full music channel to play with there. This is a ground for your deck, uh, for your little crop clip, uh, or whatever, for your earth, for your deck. Uh, each auxiliary channel has a balanced microphone input and an unbalanced mono jack input. Uh, so you can, depending on which microphone you use or which lead you use, you can either put it in there or there. It also has a line level input for each of the auxiliaries. Uh, so quite flexible the auxiliaries. Remember you've got a gain input, you've got bass, you've got mid, you've got top uh, controls and an echo, uh, amount of echo and send on, on the channel on the front. So those are the three, three inputs for the auxiliary channels. Here on the echo loop, uh, there is your send and return, like I say, like a mixing desk. Uh, your jack would uh, come out of here into your echo machine and uh, back into here in your return, which I just remembered, I didn't demonstrate the echo. We'll go back to that in a minute. Uh, so that's your echo loop for your echo. There's your full range output, mono again, which is on the rotary on the front. And here are your two outputs, uh, treble and weight, or tops and bass, uh, well, mid and top and bass, whichever you want to call it. That's just harking back to the old ways of doing things back in the day. We used to call it weight and treble. So if you want more outputs, you can always split the um, output lead to, to go elsewhere. We're just trying to keep things simple on this uh, without complicating it for people 
who, who don't know a great deal about these machines are starters. It's a great way to start. And this is a ground lift. Yeah, if you've got a ground hum or a buzz or anything like that, and it's the earth, or you've got a bad earth in it where, and you can hear some buzz, you know, 50 hertz buzz, you try switching that and it'll probably get rid of it in one position or another. It's a ground lift um, to stop echo, uh, not echo, uh, earth looping of interconnected equipment. There's your uh, power input. It's at, this unit is actually 110 or 240. It's just switchable inside on the power supply. Uh, and there's a fuse in there as well. Uh, so I think that's about it. Uh, oh yeah, these. It comes with rack ears as well. Which if you have a look around here on the front. If you want to put this in a rack, you just... It comes with these rack ears and the necessary machine screws that go on there and it'll sit in a rack nicely, a 19 inch rack. So it comes with those as well if you want to put it in a rack. Uh, but I quite like them as they are standalone, just like the old fashioned ones, but you do have the option. Anyway, I'll show you the echo loop. Now, with it being an analog, echo that I use there's a little bit of hiss on it that's why the, the plug is actually not plugged in at the moment while I'm demonstrating uh, right what I'm going to do here <laughs> It's not at the wrong speed. Milton Henry's just got a very low voice. Right, I'm just going to lift that record off and see if you can hear the hiss when I push this in. I don't know if you can hear it on this phone, but there's a little bit of a hiss, but it's this unit. It's absolutely quiet when... It, because it's analog, it's not digital. It's got a bit of a hiss, they always do, the old ones. So now we've connected the um, e uh, echo unit. So I'm going to demonstrate the echo. So you can hear the echo there when I switch this down and it stops when I switch it up. This is a particularly useful feature that I often use on my old link preamp. So you've got a, you can just click in a little bit of the music and send it looping through your echo for great uh, sort of old dub style effects, if you will. Uh, each channel has got one of these. So that's how the echo works. This is the amount of echo you're sending for, from this channel. That's the amount of echo I'm sending from that channel, etc. And you can also adjust it here on the echo loop. So it, you're not sending it too much signal or you, you, you can basically shape it so it, it's perfect uh, and all on the same level. So if I was to try the mic, I think I've got the mic plugged in here. Check, one, two, mic. Right, I'm on the microphone now. Um, if I flip this down here, we'll get an echo. If I flip it up, it's stopped, right? And it's the same with the music on the music channel. Uh, that's the amount of echo, I'll just got it halfway. This is the, the, the gain for the uh, microphone, uh, simple as that. We've got bass, mid and top, which is very strong. That's uh, a lot of top there. That's a lot of mid, yeah, that's a lot of mid, and that's a lot of bass. So we've, on the microphone channel, we've got a little bit of a bass mid top EQ. The mid's quite important on, on the mic, I, I like that, it tends to cut the mix when, when you've got less bass and more mid. So uh, that's the microphone channel, and we can send it to the echo unit like that, and do outer space effects. 
or we can have it on the music. Even though it's quite a simple unit, you can be quite creative with it while you're playing. I don't think I need to be on the microphone now, do I? So after years of using the link preamp um, and getting quite, even though it's a simple preamp, you can actually get quite creative, especially if you're working on your own and it's very easy to set up. And if you just want to do something creative, you just send in the echo like that. You're not adjusting lots of different things uh, so that's basically it the 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 main philosophy of the preamp like i say is harking back to the old ones because there's a lot of interesting simple ways of doing things not only is it simple and easy to use if you're a beginner um, it's cheaper because you don't need as many amps and speakers so there's absolutely nothing wrong with two-way uh, I love playing two-way, uh, I've played this out, uh, everything works and like I say you can get creative during the night, um, there's plenty of drive in it if you want you know, the extra drive, uh, which I find other preamps can be a little bit short on drive. The bass shape actually is modelled on the sound of the old preamps like the Barracudas the Lynx, the Errols, uh, the Charlies, all those things. They've got a certain sound, old school sound, and that sound you can get with this because that's something I wanted to incorporate it because I thought a lot of the other preamps are a little bit too clean and you can't really get that old school grunt in the bass, which I like, but this you can do. It's based on an old school one, simple, uh, effective and it, it'll give you the old school sound. It's based around the music I play, which is from 1962 to 1984, mostly analog, uh, pre digital. Even though it does play digital music really well, uh, there's no use, reason why it can't. It can actually enhance digital music because it just softens it out a bit. By the way it's designed especially with the valforno stage if, if you want to use one of them so that's basically it you know so there's certain people say well it doesn't do this it doesn't do that and why don't you do this well yeah but there's nothing on the market like this there's no two ways on the market and it, it did for a lot of people a long time ago and there's nothing wrong with it now um at the end of the day good entertainment is good entertainment and like i say it's simple affordable and it's not rocket science so i think that's basically it um if you've got any questions then you can drop me an email that's probably the best idea axis sound one word with two s's in the middle uk1 at hotmail.com uh, you can have a look on the other video which is featuring the phono stage Except for when I made that video, it was in a wooden case, and so now in a metal case. That's the only difference. Uh, and if you missed my email, it's actually written down on the Phono Stage video, which is also on YouTube. Just search for Valvatron Phono Stage, uh, and it'll take you to that video. So I think that's it. Um, sold a few of these already, got plenty of happy customers, and uh, got plenty more to make on the order books. Uh, I usually let people know on Facebook when these things are ready for sale. Otherwise, you can contact me with the email if you've got any more questions or you're interested in buying one. I can ship them worldwide. UK shipping is about uh, 35 quid insured and tracked and, and all these. Europe will probably be about £70. Pounds overnight with UPS insured, tracked and signed for. The rest of the world will probably be a bit more, 
probably closer to 90 pounds uk pounds to ship it the rest of the world like i say it can be 110 volts 120 volts or 240 being english or american uh, well european or american so that's it thanks for watching and thanks to isaac my cameraman and uh keep the music playing